and we are feeling that and hearing that at the doors. Sullivan has come under fire in the final days of the race, following negative mailers against Pappas and a flap over the fact she did not vote in the last two midterm elections. While she has expressed regret, she says that's not what the electorate is worried about. It's just not what I'm hearing from voters. You know, what I'm hearing from voters is, you know, that this is these are unprecedented times in our country. Um, the future of America is at stake. Pappas declined to respond directly to questions about Sullivan, but says it's important to send someone to Washington who will take action. Enough with the sort of personal politics and uh, the really extreme policies we see being pushed. Uh, people in New Hampshire want someone who's worked on the issues and who's ready to go to bat for them. Of course, the other big question mark in this race is where the more progressive voters go, this being the Bernie Sanders wing of the party. There are several other candidates who will soak up that support, and if turnout is very high, one of them could make headlines tomorrow. Adam Sexton, WMUR, News Nut. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Republicans near end of continuous campaign in first district. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9, Adam Sexton. Andy Sanborn plans to set a grueling pace for the final hours of this primary campaign. And we will not sleep for the next 24 hours, maybe 36. Look, this is the way I've been in every campaign I've been in. You know, I've been up since 4 o'clock this morning campaigning. We'll campaign from now all the way through the end. Sanborn led a sign wave in Bedford during the morning commute. His primary opponent, Eddie Edwards, did the same just up the road in Manchester as drivers headed home in the late afternoon. And we've been throughout the district today meeting the uh, voters again. The energy level was fantastic. We're getting a lot of positive feedback. We're getting a lot of positive feedback. It's fantastic. The Edward Sanborn race has been a bitter one. Both have been on the attack. Sanborn slamming Edwards, a retired law enforcement officer and Navy veteran, as a kind of government insider. Edwards calling Sanborn an unelectable candidate over alleged workplace harassment issues at the State House. The policy differences, there's not a lot of difference between the two of us on policy. The real difference is the type of people we are and what we can bring to the general election to secure a win for the Republicans. I don't want to talk about my opponent because I want to talk every day about what I'm going to do for the people of New Hampshire as their congressperson. I'm going to fight for them. I'm, I'm going to work for them. I'm going to be there for them. That's what's important to people. Now, the dynamics of this race were changed dramatically when the more moderate GOP candidate, Bruce Crocheteer, dropped out. It's not clear where that centrist GOP support will be going in this race, but it could prove decisive if it's close in the end. Adam Sexton, WMUR, News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video. De Niro and Andy Martin. I'm out there campaigning as the guy who's sort of the adult in the room. There's no mud pies, there's no food fight. Uh, just a, a big, strong, solid guy with a lot of experience. I'm a contractor. I hope all contractors uh, vote for me. Um, Again, it's all about the opioid epidemic and solving that. And uh, I do have a plan in fixing the national debt, health care, and uh, all the main issues. And Republican Michael Collis is also on tomorrow's ballot. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Republican. Second district candidate complete for chance to take on Custer. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Kristen Carosa. Retired Air Force officer Steve Negron spent his day making phone calls from a campaign office in Nashua. It's about, you know, fighting for New Hampshire families and freedoms. That's what this campaign's about. It's about restoring American confidence. Local business owner Brian Belanger says he wants to bring a working man's perspective to Washington. And I've seen their concerns and heard their concerns. We the people belongs to the people. And 
I just want to bring that message and bring the people's voice to Washington. Navy nurse and administrator Lynn Blankenbecker believes her ability to problem solve sets her apart from the other candidates. Bring that military ethos with me to Congress to be able to work together across the aisles to work for the Granite State and to work for this for the country. Jay Mercer says it's his support of Planned Parenthood that sets him apart. I've been in health care since I was a teenager. As, as an athletic trainer, paramedic, national ski patrol, physician assistant, most of the way through medical school, um, I know patient care and I'm not going to abandon the poor people, I'm not going to abandon the women. Dr. Stuart Levinson spent some time inside his pizza shop in Concord. I believe the message of being the conservative outsider is what people have been waiting for. There's been a vacuum that needs to be uh, filled. They're tired of the career politicians. Bedford business owner Robert Burns says he wants to be a member of Congress to support the president. I was an early supporter of Donald Trump, and, uh, and you know, I'm one of the deplorables, and I think that I can activate them to get them out to, to come out to vote to help all the Republicans win. Gerard Berloin says he'll be campaigning on the Internet in these final hours, hoping his love of hard work makes him stand out. I know what political promises look like. I was raised on a dairy farm. I know what hard work is, and every morning when I go into the barn, the barn floor was covered with political promises. It was my job to clean it up. Now the candidate who wins tomorrow will take on Annie Custer in the November election. Live in the newsroom, Kristen Carosa, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And now let's take a look at the sample ballot for the town of Deerfield for the Republicans and Democrats. And here is a look at that sample ballot for Deerfield Republican for tomorrow. For Governor Chris Sununu, for State Representative in Congress, Steve Narjan, Brian Belanger, Greg Glern, Lynn Blackenbacher, Robert Burns, Stuart I. Levinson, and Jay Mers. For Executive Council, Ted Gastis and Jan Crummy. For State Senator, John Regan. For State Representative, Rockingham District 2, Andrew Robertson, James Spillini, Kevin Vervelli, Alan Barkins, and Catrion Langlet. For State Representative, Rockingham District 32, Terry Roy. For Sheriff, Bill Baldwin, Chuck Maxmoyth, and Barry Newcomb. For County Attorney, Patricia Conway. For County Treasury, Scott Pretzley. For Register of Deeds. Kathy Stacy, for Register of Probate, Ray Tweeden, for County Commissioner, Kevin Coyle, and for Delegate to State, Connor Kilgore. Now let's take a look at the Democratic ballot. For Governor Steve Marchin or Molly Kelly. For Representative in Congress, Annie Custer. For Executive Council, Gary Kentsworth or Graf Convern. For State Senator, Christopher Rowdley. For State Representative, Rockingham District 2, Lloyd Coyer. Gwen Friend or Rebecca Hutchinson. For State Representative Rockingham District 32, Tom Chase. For Register of Probate, Bob 
Davidson and her County Commissioner Joshua Rod Dunn. And that's a look at the sample ballot in Deerfield, New Hampshire. And that does it for my special right here on the Riley King Network. Please do not forget to go out and vote tomorrow. It is very important to go and voting. And please vote, everyone. Very important to get out and vote. I hope you all have a nice night, everyone, and we will have full coverage all day tomorrow on voting day. Good night, everyone. Bye.